fifth ranked team in the country in a sold out Madison Square Garden to take on St. John's Red Storm. Just 500 coming in. Duke last lost a regular season non conference game four days before Christmas 2000. Thank you, Rich so Eisen. Clearly, the Red Storm I'm needed Stuart a pre game pep talk, and he got it from Herman Edwards. We don't know what he said, but we think it was like this You play to win the game. Hello? You play to win the game. All right. Well, so did Duke, though. Dante Jones steals the pass. Puts Duke up five early. Duke up five with ten minutes to go. J.J. Redick, eight-point game. Dante Jones then hits a three from the wing with the shot clock winding down, and Duke's up ten. Jones at 23 in the game. Later in the second, Daniel Ewing drives. No. Casey Sanders, yep, nine-point Duke lead. And with Coach Edwards' pep talk perhaps resonating, the Red Storm put on a comeback. Down 11, Anthony Glover with the kids. Nine-point game, Marcus Hatton. Seven-point game, roughly a minute later, Hatton again, spin, pop for three. Four-point game, next possession, Glover for three. One-point game, 90 seconds left. Kyle Cuff at the line, two free throws. And we're tied at 71. St. John's comes all the way back. Second free throw. No good. Ball goes out to Duke. But Duke does not convert. So with under 35 seconds left, it's Hat for the lead. No good. 10 seconds left. Duke's ball tied at 71. Ewing and Hatton stole the ball. Hatton's got the ball in the front court. He goes in, he puts it up. There's a whistle. He got fouled, and he'll get a chance to win the game. There was too much chaos. I thought with what happened at half court, we might be able to go to the free throw line. And, uh, and all of a sudden, there was that, and you know, the spirits of the garden took over. Well, Coach Mike Jarvis says, I would like two free throws, please. So no one at the line, no time left. One shot for Hatton, one huge celebration for St. John's. That's the game on a 12-0 run. Chris Marcus goes and very difficult shooting a free throw with no time on the clock and nobody on the, on the line. And I'm just glad he made the first one. I don't know what would have happened if he missed that one. Hello. He made the free throw. Hatton with 29 points, including 16 of St. John's final 22 points. St. John's wins by one. Johnny's came in 0-4 against ranked teams this season, losing the four games by a collective 24 points, so perhaps they were overdue. As for the Blue Devils, where does their first non-conference regular season loss in 27 games leave them in terms of their postseason standings? A new day and a new allegation from Tony Cole, who told the Atlanta Journal-Constitution that direct proof of Jim Harrick Sr.'s complicity in rules violations at Georgia exists in the form of a 28-inch color television that Cole says he once bought using Coach Sr.'s own personal credit card. Last week, the one-time Georgia Bulldog accused Harrick and his assistant coach son of a litany of violations, including paying his phone bill and doctoring a grade. On Sunday, Cole told the newspaper Harrick personally provided him the plastic at a Circuit City, adding, quote, I still have the TV, and it should be on his billing statement. Harrick Jr. on paid suspension by the school for Sunday's big home game with number two, Kentucky. And Georgia was down just five in the second half when Ezra Williams makes it a two-point game. And then Jarvis Hayes with a jumper. We're tied at 41 with 15 and change to go. Georgia down one with six minutes to go. Richard Wright, no, but there's Williams for the putback. He had a game-high 17. Georgia with a one-point lead. But that's when the Bulldogs started coughing it up. Cliff Hawkins with a steal. Chuck Hayes with the follow. He had 15 points, 12 boards. Wildcats up four. And this was just one of a string of turnovers, five consecutive turnovers for Georgia. Keith Bogan started it and finished it. Jim Harrick's team was finished. Kentucky now 14-0 in conference play. Gary Williams looking for his 500th career coaching win. Maryland and North Carolina State first half. Dog, no, this is getting heated. Going back to last year, Steve Blake face-to-face -face with Josh Powell. I said halitosis. Blake will be given a tech early second half. It was hot. Nick Kaner, Medley, and Powell. They get tangled up. A little push here, some shoving here. Double technicals will be given. Who's going to respond? 
Turps down 10. Justin Gilchrist causes a turnover. Saves it to Nicholas. Yo, short and it's your birthday. We're going to party like it's your birthday. Turps shot 52% in the second half. Just over two minutes left. Blake, jumper, have some. His first points of the game were tied at 63. Under 20 ticks left. Packed down to Marcus Melvin. We'll call him Eminem, M squared. 13 points, five boards, tied at 65. Time winding down, game still tied. Blake to Nicholas. Nicholas, fadeaway three. Booyah! He had 17 points. Maryland up three. North Carolina State inbounds quickly. Clifford Crawford missed the half court shot. Maryland comes back to win it 68 65. 500 wins for Mr. Williams. Big East, top 25, UConn at Pitt. Ben Hallen has never beaten UConn, and Pittsburgh's won 20 straight at home. Second half, Pitt up two. We spot shadow Ontario Lett and Brandon Knight. They put a solid screen on Ben Gordon to free up Julius Page, who scored 11 straight points for Pittsburgh at one point. Under 30 seconds left, UConn down five. Gordon, no, but he follows things right up and steps back and hits a three. Two-point game. After Knight only hits one of two free throws, we've got a chance to tie. Lots of time left to, in which to tie it, but Gordon hoists one up. Nothing but air. Rashad Anderson gets the three. He draws iron, but that's it, as Pitt wins its first game against UConn since March of 97. In Wisconsin and Minnesota, under eight minutes to go, Badgers up two. Delvin Harris to Kirk Penny. Penny, for your thoughts, well, I figured I'd hit five three-pointers for 15 of my 16 points. Under two minutes to go, Rick Rickard can't shoot money. Rickard, a game high, 22 gophers down two. Under 30 seconds to go, Badgers up two, shot clock running out. Freddie Owens blocked by Kevin Burleson. Ball comes back to Owens, shoots again. Got that one. Wisconsin never trailed in the game. They hold on to win at 69-61. Mississippi and Alabama, poor Justin Reed. He started out hot, five of five, scored 12 of the first 17 points from Mississippi, but all we show on SportsCenter is Brandon cooling down. Next shot for Reed, a Reed. miss from three, and it gets worse going for a rebound. Notice the arrow pointing to an Alabama player's foot, which then just happens to meet Reed in the midsection. He would return, but things wouldn't get better for him after the accidental kick from the baseline. Mississippi and Reed blown out. Nine straight losses for Ole Miss. Alabama, a clutch win now, 16-9 in the season. Time against Texas Tech. What about Bob Knight? He says this is not a must-win game. Oh, really, Coach? There is anything as a must-win. I mean, what, what's going to happen if we lose the next two game, games? Is Lubbock going to drop off the map? I mean, is the university going to fail to operate? All right, I see your point. Kansas up two early first half. Nick Collison. Collison, 13 points for him. Jayhawks up four. They were up six when Keith Langford, the Fort Worth, Texas native, shows off in front of his mom who was watching in the crowd. 20 points for Langford. Kansas up eight. Later first half, Andre Emmett all over the ball, makes the steal, and then what does he do? He turns it over like he's slipping. Pancakes and Bob Knight is not happy, and he kicks the scorer's table. Out! Kirk Heinrich. No! Jeff Graves. Oh, yes, Jeff Graves tips it in. Tech is simply getting beat to the glass. Bob Knight pulls a timeout. He's not happy. Red Raiders down 11. And then they turn it over. KU the other way. Heinrich to Langford. Nice finish. Mm -hmm. What about Bob Knight, you're wondering? Yeah, not happy. Texas Tech down eight, five minutes to go. Andre Emmett looking to spark his club. Hits the J. He had 16. Red Raiders within six. Kansas with an answer. They're that deep. Aaron Miles, that was smooth. Aaron Miles, 10 points for him in Kansas, going the other way. Oh, Kansas would never look back after that put oh, in. Bobby not happy. Bobby not happy. Tough night for the Red Raiders. Kev, look at the map. Lubbock did fall off the map. I didn't know Lubbock was you a know, perfect square. You know, it was kind of a hard place to find anyway. Bob Knight, can you still make this tournament? I'm not on the tournament committee. Why don't you call somebody on the tournament committee and ask them? All right, we'll work on that. Kev, get that tournament committee person on the phone right now. Red Raiders lose. Mm -hmm. Pulled from practice and questioned by NCAA investigators as the probe into the school's alleged wrongdoing continued. Meanwhile, several of Tony Cole's acquaintances spoke out against the former Georgia player who accused the basketball program of several NCAA violations, saying his actions actually fit a familiar pattern. Jacqueline Jacobs, who took in Cole's on at least two occasions, said, quote, my opinion is these people went out of their way to help him and he turned against them. 
Also on Monday, Rhode Island acknowledged that they are investigating allegations that players there received money from former coach Jim Herrick's staff and boosters and also had their grades changed. Herrick left Rhode Island in 1999. The Atlantic 10 will strip St. Bonaventure of six of its conference victories, ban them from the postseason tournament because of an ineligible player, junior Jamil Terrell. Also making news, the Fresno State Bulldogs, a team that's already clinched the regular season WAC title, will not be playing any postseason games this year. The school has banned its basketball team from the postseason after finding instances of academic fraud involving former basketball players. Fresno State will also reduce the total number of men's basketball scholarships by three for two seasons beginning in 2004. Back to the courts, Utah Air Force, Rick Majerus's Utah team looking to make something happen on offense. Cameron Coford getting his ball down low and missing the lay-in, but no worries, Richard Cheney is a friend. Take another look, Cheney. He's built for this. Utah up two. Then Bryant, Markson on D gets the steal. And Markson's going one on four. What do you think happens? Nobody stops him. Yeah. Very impressive. Second half, Utah up five. Still a game. Tim Drisdom over to Tim Frost, who finished with 16. And Utah finished with a five-point win over Air Force. Let's keep it coming. Wichita State, Creighton. Three seniors on senior night, 3 3 oh, 3 DeAnthony Bowden, Kyle Corver, and Larry House. First Bowden. Who wears number three? Pitch the three. Creighton up 46-27. Now it's Corver's turn. This is a specialty, of course. Creighton up by 25. Corver with 13 points. The Shockers had 25 turnovers. That was shocking. What about House? 11 of 16 from the field. And he got into the three-point act. House a career-high 28 in 22 minutes. And Corver celebrating with his mom and dad. Mountain West basketball, UNLV in Wyoming. And David Rodenhouse running the floor and uh, rocking the house. All right, I know it's kind of corny, but it was a tasty dunk. I'll live with it. Wyoming up by four, second half. The pass goes off Rodenhouse's head straight to Maury Korea. Sometimes lucky is good. All right, 8.3 seconds left. UNLV down by three. Marcus Banks led the running Rebels with 23 points, but loses the rock there. Wyoming wins by three.